Wine Ambassadors. Are you blessed this morning? Yeah. Come on, let me hear you in this house this morning. I know we are overflowing. We're still here. Yes, 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 yes. God calls us blessed. Amen. He's calling us. I'm not saying it. He's saying it. He's calling us loved. Amen. Are you loving this place? Amen. I just want to greet our online visitors. Sorry, if it's wild on here. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are so glad you, 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 know, you chose to click on that link. But I just want to invite you to the atmosphere. It's hot here. It's blessed here. It's overflowing yeah. Amen. We can't wait to see you. And before we continue, we've got some people joining us for the very first time. We've got Hannah Manuel. We've got a lovely lady by the name of Jessie. We've got Patrick Mushau. We've got Colleen Ntabi Singh. Riba. <laughs> Yay! I got her name right. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Welcome. Welcome to the Embassy Church. We hope that this won't be your last. Okay? Please come back. We hope to see you again soon. Be blessed in this house. Let's stand this morning as we give God some praise. As we give God the worship that he deserves this morning. Amen. There's no God that is greater than him. There's nobody else that can do what he can do for you in this place. Amen. So come on as we sing this morning. We won't stop. He's not going to stop. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, come on take it away, bless. Woo, church, clap those hands with Jesus. Let's go. Now 
you to clap your hands and then also in Sunday school they said if you're happy and you know it I want you just to stamp your feet stamp your feet make the devil nervous I believe something's gonna happen this morning concerning dem demonic dominions 
So make it known to the devil that you're coming out. Amen. Coming out of whatever things that are holding you back. Whether it's depression, whether it's uh, just sorrow, the joy of the Lord may be your strength. <laughs> yeah. See, see, I like that sister. She's got joy, but her husband is saying, don't do that, don't do that. He, he shouldn't be stopping your joy. Don't let, don't let anybody stop your joy. Amen. Anybody tries to stop your joy, tell them, make some space. Even tell them to just find another place. I like that. Make some space, find another place. Amen. If you're visiting us for the very first time, what a joy it is to have you. We receive you with the, with the, uh, with the, with the joy of the Lord. Thank you. You could have chosen any other place to be in, but today, thank you for making the embassy your preferred place of worship. Amen. If that's you, if you're visiting us for the very first time, raise your hand. Let me see your hand. Sometimes we, it's intimidating, but we have a gift for you. If you raise your hand, you are going to get a gift. And I tell you, it's not an ordinary gift. All right. If you raise your hand, you can, you'll receive a, a card. They have? You received it already? My, you guys are sharp, eh? All right. And then we have Pastor Brian and Eileen with us. They joined us over the uh, conference. Uh, he looks like somebody I know, but with a head full of hair, I think. Uh, is Gregory's brother, they they siblings. And so it's a joy to have you with us, Pastor. You may be seated for just for a few moments. Don't don't get too comfortable. How many of you were here for overflow and you enjoyed it? Man, it was it was good. And so uh, what you've received are keys, you've received word, and you've received inspiration for the overflow to break over your life. Don't despise anything of overflow, for what you respect is what you will attract. Anything you despise, you close the door to it. If you despise a word on blessing or prosperity, you shut the door of your life to it. And that's why others will receive the same thing that you have closed your life to. So never despise. I like the word that I think Bishop spoke about. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. If you hear people uh, uh, contradicting what you want to receive in your life, Say, I am not engaging in that conversation that is closing the door of that blessing to my life. Are we together this morning? Be careful of what conversations you engage. The whole world was created with a word. And so words are very important. Uh, and, and, and don't stand and sit and walk in ungodly counsel. Sit, stand, walk. Sit, say that with me. Sit, stand, walk. Sit, stand, walk. Say that with me. Sit, stand, walk. Sit, stand, walk. If you understand it in Psalm chapter 1, it paints a portrait of a blessed man. And when you understand where you sit, stand, and walk, it determines the portrait of your life. Whether you will live a blessed life or a cursed life. Blessed is a man who walketh not in the council or sit not in the council of the ungodly no standard in the way of the sinners are we together amen, amen. Um, next week is communion we never miss communion in in this house all right i'll be preaching and teaching on the the, the price of blood the price of blood there's a currency in the heavenly realm that is only paid with blood how's that Blood is a heavenly currency. Uh, sat Satan, satanic worshippers understand the context of blood. So next week, if you want to know more about that, you'll be here. How many of you are already reserving your, your space? We don't reserve places in the church. Uh, no seats are reserved, but how many of you are reserving your space? Uh, that's all. How many of you are reserving your seat? And don't lie in church. Never tell a lie in church, all right? This morning, we're going to receive your giving. The Bible says, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will you take out your seed this morning as we sow it in the soil of good ground? Father, we do thank you this morning for the 
opportunity to sow seed. And as we cast our seed, we, Lord, look forward to an orchard full of fruit. And Father, we thank you that there's going to be a seal of heaven, an endorsement on the ordinance of our giving. That, Father, we make a covenant with you. As you said, if you give, it shall be given unto you. We thank you. We stand on that word in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. We're going to be seated as we give uh, this morning. And uh, once we've received all the giving, we'll stand uh, and we're going to worship God. I thank you. And as we worship keep God in giving, keep providing. I have all that I need. You are all that I, I want need. you to engage this morning. I keep praying. Lift your hands, lift your voice. Forget about every agenda this morning. I want you to connect in the spirit realm.
bless you. We worship you this morning. I want you just to raise your hand wherever you are in the beauty of holiness and exalt him this morning. Tell him how much you love him. Declare and decree your love for him this morning. Yeah, yeah. Let your life serve as an aerial of attraction this morning for his presence. This entire stage and the auditorium is an altar. Therefore, you are standing on holy ground. I want you to just uh, cause your life to be a magnet to the presence of God. Cause your life to be an attraction for the Spirit of God. Say, Lord, fill me up until I overflow. I don't want you to leave this meeting the same way that you entered. I want you to leave changed, different, filled with the presence of God this morning.
I want you to go into the spirit dimension and dismantle demonic dominions this morning. I want you to say to the in the spirit realm uh, that your life is not negotiable for powers of darkness. Uh, I want you to put it out there this morning that the gateways of darkness uh, are being shut uh, in your life. Uh, that your body is not negotiable. That your spirit is only open to the spirit of God. Uh, this morning, Father, I dismantle powers of darkness. Uh, I shut down, oh God, uh, gateways uh, powers uh, that are demonic in nature that want to infiltrate into the minds of people that want to infiltrate the lives of people i shut it down this morning i cancel i cancel evil agendas i cancel evil assignments i pull down demonic strategies this morning i want you to engage this morning in the spirit if god has blessed you with another language i want you to speak this morning put it out there even if it's for one moment uh, I want you to shatter and pierce the spiritual veils uh, this morning Rakara Mashanda Ekere Marianda Rabababababahandi Yekoramande de de le Katianda Rabahanda Tilamoshanda Pull down strongholds this morning Pull down every argument of and pretentious word uh, that has been released into your life uh, that causes chaos uh, say my life is being ordered now in the spirit realm uh, i am being ordered this morning i shut the doors to powers of darkness uh, i paralyze demonic strategies uh, I open the doors of God this morning for the Spirit of God to flow in this place. I open the doors for the anointing of God to be poured forth into this place. Let the four winds of the earth blow the Holy Ghost into this place. Let the four winds of the of this earth blow the power of God into this place. I make evil uncomfortable in this place. I make evil uncomfortable in this place this morning. If you couldn't dance before you came in, I want you to dance this morning and make the devil nervous. Make the devil nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Announce in the spirit realm, I'm coming, 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 I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. For the shout of the Lord uh, is amongst us. Uh, for the shout of the Lord is amongst you. I see the evidence of your goodness. All over my life. All over my life. Thank you, Jesus. I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life. devil nervous give God permission to lead your heart into victory declare that he is your strength and he'll always be there I see, I see
We thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for the evidence of your goodness that's all over our life. We release, O oh God, your goodness. We release honey from a rock. Those that are standing, O oh God, between a rock and a hard place, we ask for the water of the Holy Ghost to flow over them. Those dry areas that have been parched, I pray, God, that there's going to be water that's going to flow over them. This morning, Father, as we commit our lives and our hearts unto you, we say that we are ready to receive your word. Speak to us. Let the sword of the word of God, which is a two-edged sword, cut all things that should not be. May it be released from our lives. I do believe, oh God, that the next few moments in your presence is going to be a life-changing one. Use your servant this morning. Let the unction of the Holy Spirit be upon his life. Let there be an anointing that will saturate him. It will flow with realms of glory and with dimensions of grace. And we vow to give you all the praise and the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. If you're blessed, I want you to put your hands above your heads and give God all the praise this morning. Hallelujah. The next voice you're about to hear is God's servant for this morning. It's Bishop Ben Daniels. We are happy to have him together with his lovely wife, Dr. Elisha Daniels. And uh, Levi and Liam, Levi and Liam, uh, we traveled, Levi was a young boy, at a, a very, very young, uh, when we went to New York together, and we had Kellogg's together, myself, and, uh, and his mother said, Levi, that's too much, and I said, Levi, one more box. <laughs> and then when Liam was born, I had the, the privilege and the opportunity to go up there and uh, dedicate him. What a joy it was to consecrate him to the glory of God. I asked him, what do you want to do when you grow up? He said, I want to preach. And I do believe that he's going to be an anointed preacher. I was watching him. You see, when you're a little boy and you start to connect to a preacher, he's studying the moves. He's, he's, he's studying. So this is his college. This is his time. I kept you standing up until this time because in the embassy, we know how to receive a prophet. And the Bible says, uh, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will get the reward of that prophet. If you shut down now, you shut down the reward of your reception. So the way you receive, I want you to double clap uh, if you have to dance and shout as I bring uh, Bishop Ben up onto the stage. Uh, you can do better than that. We deserve a better blessing. You can shout this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The excellence in this church you can compare to that. I mean, this church has excellence. I thought you should shout in that place. Amen. Amen. Everything about the embassy is excellence. We celebrate you. We celebrate the grace of the man of God and the woman of God in this house. It's taken a lot to get to this place. When you find the church in this level, it tells you it's taking a lot to get there. It's not an overnight thing. It has come a long way. Let's celebrate the gifts in this house. We celebrate you. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. We believe that God is taking you somewhere. God said to me, the people you were connected to in life determined how far you will get in life. As you were connected to this ministry, to the grace upon the man of God, I promise you, wherever God is taking him to, God pulls you along with you and takes you there. So that's why you have to stay connected. You have to stay connected. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody distract you. You have to stay connected to this grace. This commission has a unique grace. And you have 
to stay connected to this grace. Give God praise, if you will. Give him praise. Thank you, man of God. We appreciate for this opportunity to be back at the embassy. We really don't take it for granted. We really appreciate you and mom. We appreciate the prophetess of the house, the gift of God upon their life. We celebrate you. We thank you. The Lord bless you. I'll take a few minutes of my time this morning, but I will not forget to let you know my seven colors of rainbow is here with me this morning. And she is, she is my puri pata. Amen. The only bani chow in my kitchen. Give God praise, if you will. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Lift those hands up as we pray quickly. Just lift those hands up as we pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Somebody in this house will say with me, Holy Ghost. I want somebody in the house to say, Holy Ghost. Say, Holy Ghost. Every war, every war of stronghold around my life, this morning, I prophesy, break, 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 break every stronghold of every stronghold of the enemy around my life. This morning, I prophesy, break, 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 clap those hands and break it. Clap those hands and break it in color bijou diva. Every stronghold, war of stronghold, but every war of stronghold, we break it, we break it, we break it in the name of Jesus. We break it in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold, every war of stronghold around your people, oh God, keeping them in a stagnant place. I break it tonight. I break it this morning. 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 I break it this morning in the name of Jesus. Every war of financial barrier, every war of sickness, every war of limitation. This morning we command be broken, be broken, be broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Say, Holy Ghost. Say, Holy Ghost. Every soul tie. Keeping my life down by blood or by relationship. All soul ties, evil soul ties, right now, break, 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 break. Say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, every evil soul tie, keeping my life down. This morning, I prophesy, break now, break now. Clap those hands and break it. Clap those hands and break it. He called up it. He pushed it every so time. Lord, from past relationship, from past relationship, by blood, by family, we break it, we break it, we break it, we break it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the demon of stagnancy. In the name of Jesus, We give you praise, we give you glory, we worship you, we honor you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. This place we decree and declare. Every spirit of affliction be destroyed. Every demonic affliction afflicting your people with sickness and disease, financial stagnation, stagnancy, hindrance and obstacles, every spirit of retrogression, the spirit of affliction, we break you today. We destroy your power now in the name of Jesus Christ over this house over every man every woman every boy every girl every child the spirit of affliction drugs of affliction substance we declare every demonic substance we break it now break break 
break break in the name of Jesus thank you father you are free to prosper you are loose to excel you are free to go higher you are free to go higher you are delivered to excel you are delivered to prosper it's your time in the name of Jesus thank you father every technicalities and machineries every armor's weapons of the enemy formed against your destiny your life your career your marriage relationship children we destroy by the anointing of the holy ghost be loose today be loose today be loose today in the name of jesus thank you father give god praise if you will give him praise give him praise Give him praise, give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise. Glory to God. While you remain standing, give me Hebrew, if you will. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. While you remain standing. Hebrews 11, verse 3. Thank you. By faith. We understand that the word we are framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen, we are not made of things which are visible. Or things which do appear. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. Romans 1 verse 20. For since, for Romans 1 20, for the invisible things of him from creation of the word are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without, 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 now give me 2 Corinthians, if you will, 4 verse 18. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen. I want you to look at this scripture very well. While we look, at the, look not at the things which are seen, but, things, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. I said the things which are not seen are eternal. Give him praise if you will. You may be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. It's good to be back home. God is good. This year is your year to recover all that you've lost. This is your year of recompense. God pays you back everything the devil stole from you. A thousand times more. One thing I came to the realization is that the church tend to leave spiritual matters for the pastors and church leaders. I teach people these. I said when you go to the gym and then you get a trainer to, to train you, especially some of the young guys here that want all the stuff, you know, the biceps and all that sets and all the things there, uh, the, the, the six packs and the seven packs and all have, some have the round pack and all that pack, yeah, whatever pack it is. If you go there and get a trainer to help you put your body in shape, what the trainer would do for you is show you the weight to lift. Tell you how to lift it. He's not going to lift it for you. You will lift it for yourself. Because if you lift it for you, it will not show in your body. It will show on his body. So he teach you what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and you do it. And when you do it, it helps you. The reason why he teach you is when he walk away, you still know how to do it when he's not there. 
If you depend on the pastor to pray for you all the time, when the pastor is not there, you will not know how to do it. That's why it's important that you don't leave spiritual matters only for spiritual leaders. You have to learn how to pray for yourself. In Durban here, I'm sorry to say that. I'm sorry to say that in Durban here, have good guys in this, in this city. He knows this guy I'm talking about. This guy told me that every month he wants to put me on salary just to pay me to pray for him. So whenever he calls, I should be on the plane to just come pray for his business and pray for his life. And I've been praying for him. God's blessed him. Got millions. He was blessed so, so much of God. But I told him, I said, I would love to be on salary. See, I, in fact, I can tell you I'm praying for you, but I'm sleeping. I'm eating my roti and, and, and all that. But I said to him, if I do that for you, it's not going to help you. You have to learn to pray for yourself. You cannot depend on the prayer of anybody. Because spiritual matters is not led for spiritual people or, or pastors or leaders. You have to learn to fight. Pastors fight the same battles that you fight. Pastors' kids go through the same thing your kids go through. We are still in the same world. We face the same battles. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Pastors are not angels. They are not super superhuman beings. They are people just like you. So you need to learn that spiritual things are not for certain people. It's for everybody. Demon does not pick and choose who to attack. He attacks everybody. Life is a product of the spirit. Life is more than what we see in the physical realm. You have to understand life is a product of the spirit. The physical realm is controlled by the spiritual realm. Everything you see in the physical world, it is, I'm not preaching, I'm just trying to put some things in us so we can understand how to engage in battles in this season. If it's not for grace and for the grace and the prayers of God's servant in this house, most of us will not be standing. I'm telling you. It's because you are under a grace that covers you. And any time you move under, out of a grace, you are exposed to the enemy. That's why it's important to stay under a grace. I told somebody, I said, even if you leave South Africa to Australia, if you have a demonic power that's pursuing after you, they're still going to meet you in Australia because spirits doesn't know boundaries. Spiritual powers don't understand what it is for you to move to London and think you can escape them. No, it's a spirit thing. So the life we live today is more spiritual than physical. Everything you see today is controlled by the spirit realm. So if you have a physical issue, you have to understand it is being backed up by a spiritual power. It's backed up by spiritual power. Somebody say amen. So we have the ability to manipulate the spirit realm and have the manifestation of God's grace in the physical realm. Whatever you want to see in the physical realm, you have to first manipulate that in the spiritual realm that it can manifest in the natural realm. You will not see it in the natural until you deal with it in the spiritual realm. Demons and witches understand the power of the spiritual realm. That's why they operate mostly spiritual. Have you ever slept at night? Maybe you have experienced this before. I don't know about you, but I have experienced it so many times that in the past that when you sleep at night, somebody comes in the spirit and it's like you've been oppressed. Like you wants to shout, but you can't. And all of a sudden, you, you just shout, Jesus, and they let you go. Have you heard that before? Have you said, oh, no, you've not. You are too spiritual in the embassy. Really spiritual people here. Wow, we're going to move to Durban. There is no demonic activities here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give God praise, if you will. There is nobody in your room because the devil does not understand the door. He doesn't need to open up the door. Demon spirit doesn't need a door to come into your house because they are spirit beings. They appear anywhere. There was nobody in your room that was oppressing you physically. It was spiritual. 
A woman walked into church and said she was pregnant a few times. And, and each time she sleep and have a dream and she see blood all over in her dream. She wakes up and literally she has blood and she lose the baby. So most of the things we experience in the natural is the product of the spirit realm. Until you understand that God has not called us to wage war just in the natural but in the spirit realm. So you can have victory in the natural. So if you understand that fighting your battles in the spirit will help you win and overcome all demonic oppression and affliction in the natural. If you want to see results in your life in the natural realm, you have to learn to fight this battle in the spiritual realm. The Bible said that the things that are created are things that were created out of things that we're not seeing. Most of the operations of the powers of darkness operate at night and, up and operate in the spirit realm. You have to understand that God did not create the heavens and the earth with things that was there or existed. He spoke the word and the word came to fruition. The Bible said, God said, let there be light and there was light. The light appeared. It did not create the light out of something. It created it out of nothing. The Bible said, God call it those things that be not as though they were. There was nothing that God said, let it be. And it appeared. So everything you see in the natural is a product of the spiritual realm. Even the microphone that I'm using right now. It's a product of a spiritual realm. Somebody got the idea while they dream or, or thought about it in the spirit realm and then put it to place in the natural. Everything on the earth is a product of a spiritual realm. People can cast spell on you. Have you ever noticed some people can cast spell on people and you wonder why is this family going through the stuff? Now listen very carefully. Listen to this very carefully. I'm going to share something with you. And they go in through a spell in their life. But the person that cast the spell on them is dead. And the person died, but the spell was not reversed. Because the spell is not a physical thing. It's the spiritual stuff. So when the person died, the curse still exists. Because it was done in the spirit realm. A man had three daughters and because he was a chief in the land and didn't want his daughters to disgrace his family and put the name of the family down, he went to a witch doctor. And he told the witch doctor, he said, I want you to do a thing for me so my kids would not be pregnant until they get married. And the witch doctor did the thing and put it on a lock, on a padlock, and gave it to him. And he went to his house in the back of the yard. He dug a ground and put it there according to the instruction of the witch doctor. Because he doesn't want the daughters to disgrace the entire family. So he did that. Now listen to this. The code they put in the lock kept the daughters from being pregnant. The man died, but the lock was Still in the ground. Twelve years down the line, they can't have kids. They don't understand why. But the person that did the programming was dead. But the curse was still living. Because it was not a natural thing. It's a... So it takes the spiritual power to break that spiritual coding and programming that was done in the spirit realm and they couldn't until they came to church and the word of God was revealed went to the house everywhere dog all the places the wife said I know he was playing with stuff I knew the day he did it he told me I knew when he came back home I knew he was in the back yet some years ago but I don't know exactly where he put the thing dug the whole place and found the lock so when the lock was open and anointed and, 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 and decrees were made, few months later, God just popped them open and they started getting pregnant. They became baby machines. Why? Because the coding in the spirit realm was broken. Everything that we see in the natural is a programming of the spirit realm. Spiritual things are low. 
cannot be hijacked by human mind. You cannot hack it. I know we have people that can hack a computer. But a spiritual thing, you cannot hack that. It takes a spiritual power to be able to hack spiritual coding. So you have to become spiritually minded before you can be able to do that. Because the things we experience today are not natural, are spiritual. God told me today, as I preached this sermon today, dealing with demonic affliction. There are people that have been afflicted by powers of hell. And you said, no, my great-grandmother did that. But I don't understand why I'm going through it today. Even if the programmer is dead, it was done in the spirit realm. You have to take your stand and break that programming that was done in the spirit. So you can be free. A woman said to me in Ghana when I preached, they walked out of the church, she ran, and the security guys were pushing her away. I said, no, let her talk to me. She said she's about 40-something years. She has a good house. She has a car, good job, living well. She has money, but nobody wants to get married to her. When they go out with her after a while, before she realized they sent her a message, it's over. And they don't even have the guts to talk to her over a dinner. They just send her a message. He said it's been going over and over like that in her life. Nobody wants to get married to her. I looked at her. The first thing I asked, I asked about her family. Because you have to understand, if there is a pattern in the family, then you know how to deal with the issue. If this problem is in the family, it becomes a family pattern. And it's a spiritual problem. And you have to deal with it in the spirit realm. She said, my mother didn't get married. She went out with somebody during her time. And then my father, I don't even know who he is. So, and my mother's sister is the same experience. Then you can find out how to deal with this is a spirit spiritual pattern that you have to deal with and if you don't deal with it today it flows to the next generation because every generation will reap what the generation before has sown as a seed told that to fast and to pray and fast and pray and broke the stuff of her life go to your pastor to pray for you every day during your fasting and by the grace of God despair was broken in the spirit. Because if you can identify what the problem is, you'll be able to deal with the problem. You will not be able to deal with it if you don't understand where it's coming from. And then she, the pastor told me, he said, man of God, after a while, she's saying she wants to get married and she doesn't even know who to get married to because they're too much. I said, just choose as many as you like if you want. It's up to you if you can handle that. But the truth is, until it's broken in the spirit realm, it doesn't manifest in the natural. It has to break in the spirit. Somebody say amen. In Acts of Apostle chapter 19 verse 14. Acts of Apostle chapter 19. I'll read from verse 13 first and I'm going to close in a minute. Acts of Apostle chapter 19, verse 13. The Bible said, Then certain of the vagabonds Jews, are you there? Took upon themselves to call over them which had evil spirit the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by the name or by Jesus whom Paul preached. 14. And there were seven sons of Scaphers. These Jews... A Jew, the chief of a priest, which did so. 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Now they were trying to cast out this demon in the name that Paul was using. But they, uh, they were not under authority. You cannot put something under authority if you were not under authority yourself. 
You didn't get that. Until you are under authority, then you'll be able to exercise authority and dominion. You will not be able to exercise authority only if you are under authority. Paul was under the leadership of Christ. Jesus was still under authority. So he understood how to exercise authority. But they said, we cast you out right now in the name of of Jesus that Paul preached. We don't know him, but we say Paul preached it, but we don't have we don't have relationship with him and we are not under authority. That's why it's important to be under a, a spiritual leadership. It's very important. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are. I was preaching in London. In Croydon, a man came, picked me up. They brought me to the, to the church. Got into the church, came out of the car. Young a man opened up the door for me and took my Bible and took me to the pastor's office. He said, if you need anything, please ask me. I will give it to you. Anything you need. I said, God, anything? He said, yes. Anything? He said, yes. He went to the church. When it's time for me to preach, they came, picked me up. And the guy took my Bible and dropped me down. He served me so kindly he was looking good at the end of the service the pastor told me he said that man is one of the richest men in united kingdom but he understand that no matter how wealthy he is he still have to learn to serve we don't have that in the church today wealthy but he understood the key to his prosperity is when he learned to serve his leader. No matter how wealthy you are, you need to be under authority. If you want to exercise authority over demonic power, you have to be under authority yourself. Otherwise, demons will not listen to you. The Bible said the demon tore them into pieces and tore their clothes off their back and beat the hell out of them and bring heaven into them. Because they were not under authority. And that was the reason why they couldn't cast that demon out. Everything respond to a name. Can I preach that here? Everything respond to a name. What's your name, sir? What's your name? What's your name? Craig. Craig. When I call you Craig. Craig. What's your name, sir? What's your name? Jethro, 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 Jethro. What's your name, ma'am? What's your name? What's your name? Lynette, Lynette, Lynette. Everything answers to name. Everything. I'm closing in a minute, but everything answers to name. And I'm telling you, and that is how it is in the spiritual realm. You have to understand that. That was why the Bible said every man in this house that call on the name of Jesus if you were Jesus in this house, it answered, when I called you, you answered me and responded because I called your name. When I called you, you answered and responded because you heard your name. Everything respond to to a name in the realm of the spirit realm I decree and I declare even if it is cancer when you call it in the spirit realm it has no choice but to respond and when you call Jesus he responds and show up why will you worry why will you cry when you have the ability to call on that name that has the power to show up and to respond that affliction is is going away that sickness is going away that disease is going away somebody shout yeah shout yes it's going away God bless you everything respond to a name and that's what God God bless you God is saying in the spirit realm you have to understand that everything respond everything in the spirit realm when you call it in the spirit it respond in the natural if there's cancer in your body you speak it in the spirit realm kill it in the spirit realm it dies in the natural you didn't hear what I'm saying cancer has a spirit that backs it up Everything that is evil have a spirit that backs it up. 
we weeping, we crying, we complaining when we should be using the name that respond when you call it. Jesus is waiting. Jesus is waiting. Jesus is waiting because heaven is waiting on you to speak the word. Hell is waiting on you to speak the word. That's why everything you say from your mouth, it respond negatively or positively. It respond. The children of Israel were in the wilderness and in the book of Numbers and they opened their mouth and said, Lord, we want to die in this place. Leave us to die here. God told Moses, I have just heard in my ears what they said. So I'm going to let them die. In this wilderness, they will die. Whatever you say, it takes you by the hand. Give me your hand. It takes you by the hand. Whatever you say, it, I'm not going to excel. It takes you by the hand and it leads you there. It leads you there. When you say, I'm going to be sick, it takes you by the hand and it leads you there. Whatever you say, takes you by the hand and leads you there. If you say, I am going to be blessed, it takes you by the hand and, and it leads you there. Proverbs 18, 21, the Bible says, life and death are in the power of your tongue. God is waiting on you. The angels are waiting on you. No demon will destroy your life. God wants to take you by the hand. If you're going to rise in this house, I prophesy, I will rise. It takes you by the hand and it leads you there. I prophesy every demonic power, satanic injunction, operating in your bloodline operating in your family affecting your destiny by the anointing of God in the service it destroys and it breaks by the power of God lift those hands and shout yes tell yourself this year I am coming out this year I am coming out I've been in this mess for too long We've been in this mess for too long, but I speak the word. It goes to the spirit realm and it manifests in the natural. I am coming out. I am coming out. I am coming out. I am coming out. You can't hold me any longer. Devil, you are a liar. God is on your side. Power is on your side. The Holy Ghost is on your side. Say it. I don't know about you, but this affliction is over. This affliction is over. I said this affliction is over. Leave those hands. Say yes. Say yes. I'm coming out. I don't know about you, but I'm coming out. I've been in the mess for too long, but I'm coming out. The Bible said the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the to the pulling down every stronghold, every stronghold, and every imagination, every evil thought. You don't do it in the natural. You do it in the spiritual and it manifests in the natural. This baby will not die. I don't know these days how we feed our kids. We feed the kids with a bottle. But there's a man, he's an army, he's, he's a soldier, came back from the battlefield. The wife left the baby for him to look after the kid. And this old man with a backward mentality took the pop and this watery pop and put it in his hand and put it in the mouth of this child and blocked the nose of the child so the child can get it in that's how they do it back in those days some old mama did that and the baby takes it in and he did but he didn't understand how the mothers did because that's why sometimes I say men cannot do some things that women 
Can I press that here? Say yeah. A woman will be combing her hair. She'll still be on the phone and be checking the pot. A man won't do that. She can still be driving and be on the phone. Oh yes. And get a hot brush and still be doing her hair while she's driving. That devil is a liar. But a man will not be able uh, to do that. That's why they said the men have just one, one brain part of the brain is not working or something I'm not sure but a woman can do everything that's why they are blessed a woman can come back from work a woman is pregnant come back from work you sit in the couch like a couch potatoes watching SABC 2 or ETV she make you a coffee and give you the coffee check the kids school do their homeworks for them put the food in the pot and do all that yet we still don't appreciate them something is not right say yeah shout yeah what happened in the garden what happened in the garden with adam and eve adam and steve A -A adam and adam and eve you sure adam and eve not adam and steve i bind that demon Say yes. The serpent met the woman and was talking to her. Do you think God said you shouldn't eat this? The woman argued with Satan back and forth. Back and no, God said we shouldn't eat this. That anytime we eat this, we will be cast out. This will happen. God said, No, don't eat. She had. To argue with Satan. Back, you know, they talk. They want an explanation. You're coming back from work and your wife asks you, How was your day? You said, Fine. Now you're in trouble. Tell her, I stopped by the robot, I waved my hand to a man, and I came out of the car, I got an ice cream. They want you to explain in details. Have you been to the mall with a woman? Oh, yeah, you have grace. Some of us don't have that grace because they walk into a store, pick up a magazine, or pick up a shoe, or a bag, or a skirt, turn it upside down, leave it, go here, pick that one, turn it upside down, feed it in, put it back, and went back to the first one, and try it again, and walk out of the shop, went to another shop, came back to the same store, pick up the same thing, and still not buy it. Can I preach that here? Say yeah! A man walk into the store, he knows what he wants, he pay for it, he takes it, he's out. He's out. That devil is a liar. Watch this. Devil argued with Satan back and forth. But when she came to the man, how silly men could he told him, this is the apple. The man didn't ask no question. He took it, crap, he ate it. The devil is a liar. Say yes. Say yes. Say this year, this year, every affliction in my life, I prophesy, break now in the name of Jesus. Break, 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 break. Break, break, now. In the name of Jesus, God told me to tell you, your season of affliction is over. Anytime you're going through one thing over and over and over again, the devil is afflicting you in that area. It could be your finances, it could be your marriage, it could be your career or your job. But I came to prophesy that the affliction is over. Your deliverance is now. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. You got the power to call it to the natural from the spiritual realm. Do you need a job? Call it from there. Do you need a house? Call it from there. Do you need a car? Call it from there. Do you need healing? Call it from there. Everything in the natural is a product of the spiritual realm. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. Our sons and our daughters that are wayward, don't, don't, don't deal with them naturally. Hold it. I told them the other time, couples fight over everything. Toothpaste, toilet up or down is a problem. My view, if it's up or down, doesn't matter. This one's view is if it's up, it's bad. If it's down, we have different view. So fight over everything. Now, your spouse become your enemy. But you have to understand, these are not natural things. These are spiritual things. Because the devil will not allow God to bless you in a silver platter. Right at his face, he will step in. The devil understand when home is together, the blessing sits. So he knows that. So if I can put this apart, I can hold the hand of the blessing. So what you need to do is not fight with your partner. It's get to the spiritual realm. There might be somebody somewhere. Hold it. There might be somebody somewhere that just don't like you when they see both of you and releasing words in the spirit realm that is affecting your home. Let me tell you, sometimes you can walk into people's home. When you leave that house, even from the car, you start fighting with your spouse. It's not natural. Can I preach that here? It's not natural. So you will understand, you just, do you know, I told them in church, people think I'm too spiritual. No. They say you're over spiritual. I walked into Wimpy with some pastors. We were eating. They brought the breakfast, uh, bacon and eggs and, 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 and the toast, the bread and all that. And I told them, let's pray. And the pastors look at me, hey, Bishop, we are sitting here, man. It's already blessed. And they started eating. I said, well, you can eat yours, but I'll pray over my food. I said, this guy is too spiritual. Because you don't understand. The guy in the back in the kitchen had an issue with his girlfriend. Came to work with anger. And turned the egg with an anger. Put it in the plate. And brought it to you. You ate it. You came back home. Start fussing with your wife. And you don't understand what's going on. There are things that are attacked. The Bible said there is what you call the transference of spirit. I'm telling you, a son Goma's daughter walked into Edgar's, Edgar's, I know women, you know. Edgar's, or Fishini, or my ladies, and put on an outfit, tried it on, a son Goma's daughter tried it on, didn't fit, listen to me church, pull it out, put it back on the shelf. You went there from Embassy Church, took it, went into the fitting room, put it on. It fit right. You took it home. This is what you call the transference of spirit. Somebody touched it before you. That's why it is not too spiritual to bind the devil in anything that comes to your life. You don't understand what's happening in your life. You're blaming your wife. You're blaming your grandmama. You're blaming your, your mother. In, 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 not in love, in law or outlaw. You blame them for everything. Not knowing you have carried a transference or spirit that came from somewhere in Kwamasho and managed to come to Gateway by chance, fit in and put it back. You bought it and took it home. I'm trying to explain to you that if God opened your eyes in the spirit to see what's happening today, most problems we're going through is the product of a spiritual powers. Spiritual power. You slept in the night and had a dream and you took it for granted. Come to the pastor. Tell him, this is my dream. I don't understand it. Just pray with me. Because we have what we call chameleon demon. There's what you call the chameleon demons. Those chameleon demons are demons that transform. They can come like your grandmother's face to you in the dream. You think they are the problem. 
But because you don't have the interpretation of type and shadows, you think they are the problem. But that's what you call the chameleon demon. You have to allow the Spirit of God to explain to you what does this thing really mean. They come with that face to take a bush knife, Bobby. And she's following you with the bush knife. You wake up in the morning, you look at your husband. Your mother? Your mother? Is she coming here today, this weekend? No, can we go to Cape Town for holiday? You don't do that. You get on your knees. Understand these are spiritual things. Because somebody is trying to manipulate you. And using a chameleon demon to come to you. Sometimes it's them. But you have to have the interpretation. To understand what the spirit of God is saying at that moment. Everything that happens in the natural. Is a product of the spirit. The affliction will break. I repeat, the affliction will break. Get me back this scripture. The affliction will break. The affliction will break. Let's get back to the scripture. Put it back on the screen. For me, the affliction will break. Romans chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. Why will look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen? Believers focus more on what you see. When God is saying, you don't have to focus on the things you see. Because the cause of this problem is the things you cannot see. It's spiritual. So deal with it in a spiritual realm. Then you can have the answer in the natural realm. For the things which we see are temporal. And the things which we see are eternal. That's why somebody can call demon in people's lives and die. And that spirit still go on. Somebody asked me, say, why is generational curse for so many generations? Because it is eternal. It's a spirit thing. It is not natural. Somebody can go to a witch doctor and do something. And if that old woman dies, whatever they've done. Still live on, even if they are dead. Because what you see naturally is temporal. What you don't see in the spirit is eternal. Somebody has to come from the family and step on the blood and break it. And break it. Listen, as I close. Most of the situations and trials and family challenges we go through are entered by blood, by bloodline. A mama came and look at what she said to visit her son. And the, the in-law, the daughter-in-law said to her mama, I'm tired of this baby. I'm so tired of this baby. I'm even thinking of bringing this baby to you. He wakes up any time in the night. He cries every night. I want sweet. I want sweet. I want sweet. I gave you the baby sweet. He said, no, cake, cake, cake. I gave him cake. No, soup, soup. I gave him. He said, I'm tired of this. In the middle of the night, I can't even sleep. He said, I want my toy. I want my toy. You give him the toy. He can't sleep. And the mother-in-law was laughing at her. She said, mama, this is not a joke. She was laughing at her. So why are you laughing, mama? He said, let me tell you. Your husband was just the same. When the husband behaved like that, the baby wasn't born. But the baby was coded in the DNA of the father. So when the baby is born, that's why in some family, they have generational curse, which is cancer. It flows from generation. Somebody else in the family had it. The other one had it. It flows because it is a familiar spirit that is familiar with the family. I tell people all the time, the familiar spirit in my family cannot touch you. It has to take the familiar spirit in your family to fight you. So familiar spirit know no boundaries from where you are. You can move to Australia, they'll be there because they are familiar spirit. Are you with me? Well, my familiar spirit cannot deal with you except somebody paid somebody to fuck my spirit in a shrine. Then they can attack me. But your familiar demon in your family cannot. 
Are you with me? So when a man gives birth to a child, sometimes you look at the baby. Ooh, could you put you You look just like your father. True or false? Oh, he looks just like, look at his mother's ears. Standing up like a kangaroo. <laughs> yes. He says, just like the mother. See how that boy is working? Oh, he works just like the father. The boy was not in existence when the father behaved all that way. But watch it. When the boy is born, he's born from the DNA of the father. That's why he takes the curse, whatever the father has done. That has passed on to the next generation. That boy started experiencing the same thing. And he didn't pray. He didn't commit no evil. He didn't commit no sin. The father sinned and had that. But it's passed on to him. Because he came from this bloodline. So it takes a bloodline to be connected to a soul tie. Or to a generational kind of curses. But the good news is, that's why to break out from that, it has to take the blood. You didn't hear what I'm saying? It takes blood to get in and it takes blood to come out. I prophesy by the blood of Jesus, every curse, every affliction, every generation of spirit that's operating in your life, it breaks today in the name of Jesus. It breaks today in the name of Jesus. Say yes. A man ran to church and said, man of God, I'm going to die. I'm approaching 40 years old. I'm going to die. I'm about to die. My father died when he got to 40. My brother died that way. My other brother died that way. I'm the next in line. Now, if the father died entering 40 his brother died entering 40 it is not a normal thing it is the spiritual thing that has to be dealt with in the spiritual realm and he ran to the altar lie in the altar say lord if i would die let me die in your hands but this curse must break from my life after that week the curse was lifted why it is a spiritual issue that he brought to God that God should deal with it in the spiritual realm. I prophesy every spirit that pulls you back, every demon that pulls you back, every spirit that pulls you back by the anointing of God. I came to break it tonight. I came to break it today. You shall be delivered. Your house will be delivered. Your family will be delivered. Say it. Yeah. That man is alive today. Why? The curse was broken. The curse was lifted. The curse was reversed. The curse was reversed. I prophesy. Say, Holy Ghost, every curse in my life right now, reverse the curse in the name of Jesus. Give God praise if you will. Give him praise if you will. The curse is reversed. The curse is reversed. Leave those hands wherever you are. There's some things you're going through right now. If it's not connected to your bloodline, somebody, somebody placed that curse on you in the spirit realm. Look at me, church. There is a place in Johannesburg in the East Rand that's called Duduza. A woman went there to meet a witch doctor to help her kill her friend. Why the friend is becoming successful in business. The friend is doing so well in business. You don't know who will watch you. Just don't like you. The way you put your hair, you hold your husband's hand, they just get em envy and jealousy at the backbone to the spirit of wickedness. They hated, she just hated her friend because she was doing well and told the witch doctor, please kill her for me. And the witch doctor put the bones on the ground, looked at her and said, well, I'll do this for you. What does she do? She's a businesswoman. She's very successful. I'll kill her for you before you know it. 
and got a frog, a toad, a frog, put it in a container and evoke the spirit of that woman through the picture of that woman. Do you know that everything in most cases that is transferred to somebody else is used with a point of contact? Your picture on Facebook that you're posting eating lasagna can become a point of contact for somebody that just hates you in your past. I'm being honest with you, what people have confessed they have done. And this man put it, coded it in the, toe, in the frog and put it in the container and gave it to the friend when she came back and she paid him for it. He said, get to the road. When you see a car coming, put it there. When the car just ran over it and it's dead, your friend will die. But she couldn't understand why after all this, this woman is still buying the latest car and still alive. Because this woman don't only go to church, she believe in God. She has the blood all over her life. And you cannot curse what God has blessed. You were covered by the blood of Jesus. A lady came to confess. She said, I was paid and sent by somebody to go to work in the barber shop, hair, sh where the hair salon, just to get some piece of nails and piece of hair. But I mustn't get any tight, any rich person I see, ladies that walked in there, make sure don't sweep the hair off, gather it. People do a lot of stuff that you don't even know in this life. Oh, it doesn't happen in Durban. I know this is a good place to move to. The beach is right here. Everything is cool here. No demonic oppression in Durban. No haters. People don't get jealous of, of the next person. Wow, what a good place. It happens everywhere. I guarantee you, if you move to certain places in Africa, you will understand what goes on. Spiritual power. But let me tell you, there is one name that when you call, it answer to you. It answer. The Bible said at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to the name and they are saved. Your deliverance and your safety is in the name and the blood of Jesus. It takes blood to get into covenant. It takes blood to come out of covenant. Stretch your hands to this altar. That affliction will break. That affliction will break. From this day, let your eyes be open. Don't play around spiritual things. Understand that we are in the war ground. We are on a battlefield. That everybody that comes to you, not all that say they love you, really love you from their heart. I decree and I declare that God will open up the hearts of people to you. God will expose some people to you. God will open them up to you in this season through the power of the Spirit. I decree and I declare that the peace of God that passes all understanding will release upon your life. I decree and I declare that heavens above you will give you rain in this season. I decree and I declare every satanic affliction over your life be brought by the power of God over your house, over your marriage, your relationship, over your career, over your job, and your finances. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Have you ever experienced a situation, look at me as we close, that when you come out of one situation, you think you just made it out. You got into another one. The car just broke down. You try to fix that. The geezer breaks. You fix that. Something happened to your baby. It one after the other. The enemy keep afflicting your home. All to take your finances from you and run you down. Your money is acting funny. Your change is acting strange. God told me to tell you that season is over. I thought I would hear an amen. That season is over. Lick those hands. Lick those hands. Say, Holy Ghost. 
say Holy Ghost every satanic affliction in any area of my life right now I decree I declare break 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 say Holy Ghost every satanic affliction in my life in any area right now I prophesy break 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 clap those hands and pray somebody clap those hands and pray it all by your daba break it 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 ya topo ti she play me bo do si ba e con your body she play me bro saba ye de bo se break it break it break it in the name of jesus pray i want to see you pray pray ye con ba suba ya i break every affliction one after the other affliction in my body die in the name of jesus affliction in my mind die in the name of jesus affliction on my job die in the name of jesus come out by the power of the holy ghost clap those hands and pray somebody remove the affliction uproot the affliction uproot the spirit in the name of jesus whatever is not planted of god in your life be uprooted in the name of jesus Look at me as we close. The Bible said, put on the whole armor of God. Every day you wake up, you are in the battlefield. Watch it. The helmet of, breastplate of, sword of, shield of, of faith. Watch this. God gave you every armor to cover the front. He never gave you anything to cover the back because he did not expect you to turn your back on your enemy. Every day you wake up is a battle. Watch it. What do I need an armor for if there's not going to be a battle? It tells you the reason you need the armor is because there will be battles. Do it. Do it. There will be battles. Do it. Stretch your hands to the altar. If you're in this house and you know you've been afflicted in some areas, it could be sickness every month, sickness. Every month you seek, every week you seek. Every year in a certain period that sickness comes back. There's somebody in this house, you've been dealing with this itching problem. You're in this house right now as I'm talking to you. You've been dealing with this itching problem. It comes in like that. It comes in like that. This itching problem, this skin problem, this skin problem. You've been in you're in this place. The healing power of Jesus is released in this building right now in the name of you in this house i curse it to dry up today help me with an oil i curse it to die today in the name of jesus christ the person is in this house if you've been afflicted in any area of your life it could be your finances your job you just can't keep a job you get this one after a while, something go wrong. You get another job, something go wrong. You get another, you've just been afflicted in your job, in your career. You are being afflicted. If you're in this house, it could be in your marriage, it could be in your finances, it could be in your body. You're not healthy. You know you're not. You keep getting attacked. The devil keep afflicting your body. Today, through the power of the blood of Jesus, that affliction disappears. Through the blood of Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, disappear. Come to this altar quickly. If you're the one I'm talking about, come to this altar quickly. Run to this place quickly. You are afflicted in some areas. Or you're the one that had the skin problem. You're the one that had the skin problem. Run to this altar. Don't worry about anybody. Don't worry about anybody it dies it dies it dies it dies in the name of jesus you didn't come into church by chance you didn't come by mistake god brought you in here to heal you and deliver you if you're in this house and you have a, a sickness in any area in your body any part of your body put your hand there put your hand there those of you in church put your hand with there's somebody in this house you having this breathing problem is a breathing condition you have is a you, sometimes you have this shot 
breath. Raise that person. Lift that hand. Short breath. Come this way. Come this way. Okay, okay. Hold on. Hold on. There's two people that need to be... There's somebody else I need to pray for. In fact, this person, I need to pray for this person like now. Short breath. Lift those hands. Who had that short breath? Who had the shot? There's somebody I need to pray for. Let me see your hand. There's somebody in this crowd. I need to pray for you. Thank you. Wherever you are in this house, if you're sick in this place, put your hand wherever you've been afflicted. As I pray for you, it's going to disappear by the grace and the power of God. You're going to be healed through the blood of Christ. Jesus will heal you today. Put your hand where it is. Somebody in your back, you're going to be healed in this, in this congregation right now. God's going to heal you to the power of Christ. Thank you, Father. Release the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In this house right now, we decree and we declare through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth healing through the blood of Jesus we release the hand of God's healing from your head to your toe be delivered through the blood the blood of Jesus sing something about the blood for me the blood of Jesus heals you make you whole completely completely in the name of Jesus the miracle power of Jesus touch you visit you today life become your potion live and not die in the name of Jesus I rebuke I rebuke that satanic attack over your life be delivered right now in the name of Jesus Christ do what you couldn't do before healing over your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Father thank you Holy Ghost a miracle 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 somebody help me here a miracle help me here a miracle a miracle hold it in the name of Jesus the name of Jesus go every affliction lose your host lose your host lose your host Lose your host. Yes. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Go in the name of Jesus. 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 Hold him. Hold him. Hold him. Go in the hold him. In the name of 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 Jesus. Hold him. In the name of Jesus. Hold him. Go. In the name of go. Loose. Go. Go. Loose your host. In the name of Jesus. Loose. Loose. Loose, you gotta go. Loose, you gotta go. Loose, you gotta go. Nah. Loose. Nah. Go. Nah. Go. Nah. Yes, you gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. In the name of Jesus. Loose your hold. Yeah, top of your Go. 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 You gotta go. Yeah. Loose your hold. Loose your hold. Be delivered. Be delivered. Now. Now. Yes, don't say no. Yes. Yes, you gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. Power. Holy Ghost. You got to go. Power. Fire. 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 Yes. Yes. Go. Put him down. That's right. It's gone. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. God, he rose. Leave it with this. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. Aya, Papa. Yele, give us. Yando, do, 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 do. Go. 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 Yele, give us. Say, did I? Yes, sir. Leave him there. Leave him there. Thank you, Father. Oh, yeah, boss. Yeah, boss. 
Llena de voz Llena de voz Luz 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 Now Luz 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 Yes Go Go Be free today Be free today if I pray for you, you can go back to your seat. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. 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 Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Leave out there, just leave out there. Let God finish with her. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you're sick, you've been healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Miracle hands of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost, in the name of. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Do it for this one. It's his turn, oh God. Oh Lord, do it in his life. Turn his life around, oh God. Holy Ghost. Jesus. Do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fresh anointed, fresh anointed, fresh anointed from your head to your toe. Now, in the name of Jesus, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Now, take it, 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 go. Receive it, 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 now, 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 go. By a Messiah. Redebedebedebes. Regabosada. I want some pastors to pray for this lady. Pray for this lady. That lady. Tell the Father. Coffin, a coffin. Death. Yere de bossa. Yere bossa. Ico bossa. Ya libre no si abras y no es. Bless this young man. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him, oh God. Bless him, oh God. Holy Ghost, do it, do it, do it, do it, 
Holy Ghost, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Take it. God will wipe your tears. God will wipe your tears. God will turn it around. He will wipe your tears. He heard you. The affliction is over. Those people fighting your life, they will not get it right. In the name of Jesus, release the hand of God upon you. Receive it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hold it. In the name of Jesus. Help me here. Help me here. Glory. 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 Thank you. Lord, do it and take the glory. Let it be the season now, oh God. Let them step here and testify. It's been reversed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Give you praise. Give you glory. If you're sick here, you've been healed. Stretch your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Help. Bring, bring that lady. Bring, bring, bring that lady for me. Bring, bring her back. Pastor, just, just lay hands. Bring her, bring her here. God's not true with her yet. God's not true with her. Stand where you are. Lay hands on her. Man of God. God's not true. Where is that lady Pastor was praying for just now? The lady he was praying for now. I see her in a coffin. I see her in a coffin. We're bringing her out of it. In the name of Jesus. Where's that lady? She's not going to die. Can't Where's that lady? She's a black lady. Yeah. It's an African woman. She's here. Where's her? Where's she? Where's she? Bring her here. Where's the oil? Pour it on her head. Jesus. If you're in this house, you felt the Lord touch you. Something was in your body that is gone. You got healed by the anointing. You got touched by God. Let me see your hand. You got touched. God heal you. Close your eyes. I see you in the coffin, man. The God's bringing you out. Listen, even you, you can't take your own life. You will not take your life. You get what I'm saying? You can't do it. You can't do it. God has plans. You've cried and cried and cried and asked God why. God didn't, the devil made a mistake to let you come here today because today is your day. God is reversing it. We're bringing you out of the coffin. You can't kill yourself. Even if you try it again, you can't do it because God has a plan for your life. Nothing will kill you. No witch, no demon, no power, hell. God has a purpose over your family. I know it's not what you expect in this season. But God told me to tell you, this tears, I'm wiping it out. I'm bringing it back to you like a rain of a blessing over your life. And I'll cause the sun to shine upon you. Then you will flourish like a palm tree planted by the water of, of rivers. And then you will soar with wings of eagle. God said to me to tell you, this curse of death is broken today. Leave that hand, close your eyes. The name of Jesus release you from it. As the man of God has spoken into your destiny, so shall it be. In the name of Jesus, your house is blessed. Give God praise. If you've been healed, let me see your hand. God healed you. God touched your body. God touched your body. You came in here sick. You came in here with some affliction. But God touched you. You felt the healing of God. Let me see your hand. Come here, mama. Come here quickly. Run. What did God do for you? Quickly. God healed you. God healed you. You felt the healing power of God on your life. Run to this altar. You felt God healed you. You checked yourself. The thing is gone. Where are you? Where are you? It's gone. The healing is here. You've been healed by the anointing of God. Where are you? Run to this altar quickly. If God touched your body and you felt that that miracle is done, close your eyes, everybody, as I pray for you. Sir, I pray for the spirit of blindness. Somebody has been having trouble with your eyes lately. It looks like it's a shock and a surprise to you. Where's that person? You've been having an issue with your eyes lately. Run here, come here, come here. And you've been wondering, how come? Run here. Cancel that. 
lift those hands and close their eyes. Thank you. Help us here. If you're sick and still feel the sickness, close your eyes. I pray for you. As I pray for her, the miracle come to you. We decree and declare that God restore visions, heal you. Every satanic programming against your life and your eyes, we reverse, destroy, healing upon you today. Whatever it is, it disappears right now. That the hand of God rest on you. God touch you through the power of the blood of Jesus. Where's the oil? The name of Jesus. Just anoint the eyes. Eyes closed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Yes, so shall it be. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Be healed wherever you are. Be healed from that sickness. I command that pain to disappear right here. I command that pain to disappear. I release that miracle over your life. I destroy that affliction in the name of Jesus. If you're in this house and you know some of the things that you are experiencing in your life, you know it's a generational curse and you know it. You are in this house. Now run to this altar. Don't wait for anybody. Run to the, you know this is a generational curse. You know it yourself. I can pinpoint you, but you know it. Run to this altar. We're going to pray that one prayer and then we're done. You know this thing is not ordinary. It has to do with the generational curse. You hear, run to this altar. We're going to pray for you and it's done. And then we're done tonight, this morning. You know it. Don't miss every moment and the opportunity God gives to you to bring you out of anything. You know this is generational. This is generational. Lord, break it. This affliction is not normal. This affliction is not normal. You know it. It's generational. Lift those hands. When you come to this altar, just lift those hands to God. Surrender to Him. Say, Lord, do it for me. Change everything. Break it. Reverse it. Break the spell. Reverse it. I don't want it no more. I want to move forward. I want to advance in my life. Break this, Lord. Break this, Lord. Somebody help me here. Break this, Lord. Fresh oil, fresh grace, fresh anointing. Break this, Lord. Yes, it's coming on you. Fresh is coming on you. It will reverse it. It's coming on you. Help me here. It's coming on you. That's right. That's right. That's right. Take it now. It's coming on you to the power of the Spirit of God. So shh. Put that down. Put that down. It's your season. It's coming. It's coming on you. That God reverse it from your life. Break those limits off you. Remove those war of partitions. You're trying to break through, but it seems hard to move forward. It looks like you're going backward more than you're going forward. I declare. I decree. Hey, now, help me. Leave her there. It's broken. 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 It's destroyed. It's broken. It's destroyed. It's broken. It's destroyed. It's broken. It's destroyed. Take it now. Take it now. Take it. Yes. Holy Ghost. Let, let, hold, hold the oil with that hand. Hold, hold the oil with the other hand. Irreke de bete se tene mesia. Lira prido soto yo bodo se le gebe sia. You know, Sadababado celebrate. Eco yo bodo soto yo bodo. Break it now. Oh, shut up. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We give you praise. We give you glory. God, we believe. Yes, we can see. Thank you, Father. That's right, hold it. We decree and we declare to the power of the Holy Ghost. Nothing will stop you from this day forward that the yoke be broken, shackles be removed, every obstacle be reversed to the power of God. Break through. Sir, I tell you, your dreams are coming to fruition. You have big dreams, big dreams, but you're far from it. I prophesy you're coming into it to the anointing of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It is done. 
Say Holy Ghost. Say Holy Ghost. Say Holy Ghost. Every curse from my bloodline limiting my progress or restricting my progress right now at this altar I prophesy destroy now destroy in Jesus name amen 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 it is done give it praise give it praise God bless you God bless you I want to pray for one person sir I want to pray for this young man he gave us a coin a while ago, a couple of years ago. He's in this building. I felt in my spirit. He gave us a coin. Wherever you are, I want to pray for this young man. God bless you, church. God bless you. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands, everybody. It's done. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Bring the oil. In Jesus' name. I want everybody in this building. Affliction is reverse. You've got to take that today. You've got to take it. You've got to take it. I love that. I love that. I love that. Right at this altar. Right at this altar. Sweatless life sweatless God said to me to tell you you are too sweet to sweat too sweet to sweat sweatless victories sweatless living sweatless life sweatless sailing God give you peace like no other God increase you and empower you God give you grace to accomplish things that hundred people put together cannot accomplish. No, you didn't hear that. I decree, I declare. Stand, 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 stand. Look at me, sir. I'm so sorry, man. You've got to forgive me. Today, God told me every plot to take your life in the month of October in 2022 will not stand. Go put it down in your diary and pray against it. I'm telling you, put it down in your diary and pray against it. In the month of October, every plot to take you will not stand. But listen today, God want me to tell you, as you leave this service, you will feel it in your spirit any amount, I'm talking about money, any amount, you're going to avert death from your life. Any amount, you will feel it in your spirit. Transfer that money to the pastor's account today. I know you are a giver. I know you've given to him. You've given to this church. But listen very carefully. Anytime a prophetic instruction is obeyed, at the other side, God shows up. Every plot over your life will not stand. God said to, give to me, 100 people put together, what you would do, they can't do it. That's the strength he's given to you. That's the strength he's given to you. I'm telling you, you alone can do more than 100 people put together in this house. You are blessed. Nothing will touch you. Nothing will stop you. In Jesus' mighty name, you are under the blood. That's where you are. And evil cannot reach the blood. So you are under the blood. Your house is covered. Your family is covered. In Jesus' mighty name. As you leave this house, feel it in your spirit. As the Lord would drop it in your, your figure, in your heart, transfer it as a seed into him. And as you connect, just like Isaac and his sons, Jacob and his sons. You want to say something? You want to say something? You want to say something? No. You want to say something? You are covered by the blood. 
in the name of Jesus. Take an offering, everybody in this house, an affliction offering. Reverse an affliction offering. Take an offering in your house. I know you've given. Take an offering in your hand. Please take an offering in your hand. It could be five rand. It could be ten rand. It could be fifteen rand. It could be five rand. It could be one rand. But take something in your hand. Take something in your hand. I know the system of giving in this church is so unique that people don't come to church with money. And that's what I stole from him. People give online. It's good. But now listen. Take a physical cash in your hand. Don't put it in the basket. Put it in this altar. Don't put it in the basket. If you want to give by WhatsApp or whatever it is, WeChat, whatever it is, how you give in this place, you can still do that. And if you've done that, is it WeChat? What you? That's how they give in China. Is it WeChat or ChatWe? You can do it immediately. If you've done that, run to this altar. And touch the altar and that's it. If you have yours, drop it in this altar and that's it. The Lord bless you. you're singing there's an atmosphere that's in this place this morning an atmosphere for healing atmosphere for deliverance i know your time is gone but it's not a moment that you can manufacture i want you to take authority over every demonic dominion You to listen to me. I know your time is gone, but one moment in an atmosphere of grace can save you five to ten years of your life. So don't don't mind this moment. It's it's it will add down the line to you. Uh, Bishop did well in what I was teaching. He preached it so well. He preached it better than I could ever have preached it. And, and I never told him what we're talking about in this church. And so I do believe today that there is a spiritual realm where demonic dominions are prevailing because of COVID. It's been left like for two years to run rampant. And so there's, there's a whole lot of affliction and it, it needs to be addressed 
Churches need to address it like we're doing here. And that's why in my spirit I feel what we've been doing for this past month as a theme. The Lord has impressed on me to continue it into the next month. Because there's so much of dismantling that needs to take place. There's so much of protective edges that need to be restored that have been broken. Next week I'll talk to you about this. But uh, when, when the spirit, uh, when, when death comes to, to a person, that spirit doesn't die. And so we'll, we'll show you again how this, there's just, you just need a protective edge. Are we together? And so what has happened here today, I want to just say this because it may not be, I may not be able to, to tie it up and it may take me another 30 minutes to resurrect the thought. But there are things what we call spiritual patterns, spiritual patterns. When you go home today, in your quiet moment, I want you in your own bloodline to look for spiritual patterns. And then you start to take authority over that pattern. So, you look at your grandmom and see whether she had children outside of wedlock. If you look like at your mother and you see that your mother uh, that came from that had an affair. And if you look at your own life, you're not uh, tempted by the bottle, but you're always tempted by Barbie. It's a spirit. So in, in that, that pattern, you, 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 you research patterns in your bloodline. And here's why it's important. By the blood, you break the blood line so that your children don't have to fight daddy's demons. Are we together? It takes you to arrest a pattern. And that's why going down the line, my grandson must not say the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. Because we've come past that. He must say the God of my grandfather Vernon and the God of my mother Letitia. You, you understand what, what he's saying? So that's, that's far gone. But how about we make, we say, by the God of Vernon and the, by the God of Letitia. I don't have to fight this demon anymore. And so today, it's important that you don't come to a service like this and just go out blank. You don't blank out. You go and you assess and say, what happened? What happened in that meeting? Because whilst you've gone dull, the enemy has not stopped plotting. Your downfall. So there's, there's a spiritual realm that we need to engage in. Coming to churches in, in the future is not going to be like we did in the past. There's, there's a new realm. There's something that God's de de doing with you. You have to be what we call, I, the word I'm looking for is enlightened. We have to be, have an enlightenment. Are we together? And so that's why if you catch that then. David said, I was glad when they said, come let us go into the house of the Lord. You, you won't be able to wait for next week because we're going to break these things. One moment can save you five to ten years. Remember that. Raise your hands this morning. There's a representation of families in this house, O oh Lord. There's a high spiritual sensitivity in this place this morning, God. And as people lift up their hands, let it be an aerial of attraction for your presence. I pray, God, no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. As a man who understands spiritual things, when we speak about subjects like this and expose demonic avenues, demons will create pathways for attack. But Lord, today, I encircle every person that's here present with the fire of the, of the Holy Spirit 
and with the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I release this house with your blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Lift up his countenance towards you. And the Lord give you peace. By the true definition of peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. In Jesus name. Amen. Listen to me. I want you to get the communion. And on your, on your, on, on your exit. Listen. Don't, don't leave. I just feel God just put it in my. He said put the blood in each person's hand. I want you to take the communion. Uh, whenever gather your family. But I think there's only one thing that reverses bloodline curses. The blood of Jesus. That's why. That's why heaven orchestrated the coming of Jesus to die on the cross. Don't negate this blood. All right. So please get, get, get the communion tub uh, on your exit. God bless you. We love you. Stay protected. Stay safe. Stay secure. We'll see you next week. Bye.